So as a pilot, we obviously need some sense of how high we are above the ground when we're flying, and we get this information primarily from the altimeter. But you'll find in ground school that the altimeter is somewhat of a fickle instrument. So fitted in most general aviation aircraft is what's known as a sensitive altimeter, and this is just an aneroid barometer that measures the absolute pressure of ambient air and displays it in terms of feet or meters above a selected pressure level. So what you're looking at on the panel is really a barometer, but one that we've carefully painted with units of feet rather than some unit of pressure. We need to be careful here not to think of the altimeter as an altitude measuring device, but rather a pressure measuring device that we can use to approximate our altitude above sea level. So as we ascend in the atmosphere, the ambient air pressure understandably decreases, but the rate at which that pressure changes, this is known as the pressure lapse rate, can vary significantly depending on the weather conditions of that day. So when they first began designing altimeters, they needed some idealized atmosphere, something with a well-defined lapse rate that would more or less provide an accurate altitude reading on the instrument. And what they came up with is now known as the ICAO International Standard Atmosphere, and this goes hand in hand with the International Standard Day that you're probably also familiar with. And in this standard atmosphere, we have a pressure of 29.92 inches of mercury at sea level with a temperature of 15 degrees Celsius, just like on a standard day. And as we move up in the atmosphere, we see the pressure decrease, one inch of mercury for every thousand feet. And this will remain true until we get to about 5,000 feet. So in a standard atmosphere, 1,000 feet above sea level would have an ambient air pressure of 28.92 inches of mercury. Note that this is one inch lower than it was at sea level. But of course, we'll never be flying on a truly standard day, and to account for this, our altimeters can be tuned using the Colesman window. And of course, we do this before every flight and periodically as we fly along. And, and what is happening when you enter the altimeter setting is we're actually shifting the entire standard atmosphere vertically. You can think of this as a simple linear offset if you want. So this means that 29.92 inches of mercury is no longer the pressure at sea level, but has been translated up or down. Note that this has no effect on the lapse rate of the instrument, however. It simply shifts the pressure level that we start lapsing from. But when you think about it, this is a fairly limited method of calibrating the instrument. If you can imagine the infinite variations of pressure we can encounter as we move through the atmosphere, surely you can see how the altimeter errors can begin to compound. You may have heard the mnemonic from high to low, look out below, which I would say is debatably effective. But let's look at exactly how the altimeter can deviate from our true altitude. If you remember back to high school chemistry, at some point you probably encountered the ideal gas law, which shows the relationship between the volume, temperature, and pressure of an ideal gas. And it demonstrates that as a gas is cooled, its pressure increases and it becomes more dense, whereas a gas that is warmed will expand and become less dense. Now put yourself in the left seat of an airplane and visualize a fixed column of air beneath you. You're flying the airplane at a constant indicated altitude, which means the static port is feeling a constant pressure. If that column of air below you is cooled, it will contract, and to keep the pressure the same, you will inadvertently descend the aircraft closer to the ground. Note that the reverse is also true. If you heat the column of air, it will expand, and you will inadvertently climb to keep the altimeter needle in the same spot. So if the altimeter is prone to such errors, and with no way of correcting the instrument in flight, why do we still use this pressure-based system? Well, the purpose of the altimeter is twofold. First, it gives the pilot an approximate indication of his or her altitude in order to avoid terrain and obstacles. But secondly, it provides a standardized system for us to coordinate with other aircraft and maintain vertical separation. So despite the errors induced by non-standard temperature and pressure, we can be assured that all other aircrafts will be affected in the same way. These errors lessen our ability to find our absolute altitude, but remain very effective at indicating our altitude relative to other aircraft in the area. And do know that these pressure differences are fairly minuscule except for flying in very cold temperatures. Under moderate conditions, you should be able to maintain an altitude above the ground that is far greater than any error induced by non-standard temperature or pressure on the altimeter. 
The ICAO has published a standard cold temperature correction table if you're curious about the magnitude of this error. So, like all instruments in the cockpit, the altimeter is not without its limitations, but as safe pilots we must understand these limitations to use the tool safely and effectively. It's really up to you not to fly into mountains when it's cold outside.